or evening or afternoon or whatever it is. Good afternoon. Hello. It is good to be back again this afternoon. It is good that we had the opportunity to enjoy a good meal together. I appreciate everyone who was there and everyone who brought something, even if some professed they were trying to poison the preacher. I won't call anybody's names out, but she knows who she is that indicated she was trying to poison the preacher. But it was good, whatever it might be. But it was good to be able to enjoy each other's company, to be able to enjoy good food, and, and hopefully uh, to just enjoy being together. And I must say that all these things that we talked about, or, or that I just mentioned, it really ties in, and you might ask uh, how, but hopefully you'll see how, ties in with our lesson this afternoon, which of course we continue in Galatians chapter 5 in verses 22 and 23, looking at the fruit of the Spirit. Matthew, in Galatians, I may have said Matthew, but Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. What a beautiful, and I've said this a number of times, and we'll say so again today and probably next week, that this is a beautiful text and one that needs to be studied and heeded very much. These are things that ought to be seen daily in our lives, brothers and sisters, and, and we need to make sure that if they're not, that those are areas we need to work on. But I ask you to bow with me as we go to God in prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father, we humbly bow before you in prayer. We praise you, exalt you, we thank you, Father, for all that we have been blessed with. Father, we thank you for your word that, that guides us in the way that we should go. We pray that we will humbly open up your word daily and study, that we will look at these things, grow in knowledge of your will, and apply these things appropriately to our lives and live accordingly, Father. We pray that we may be examples one to another and to others, that we may live your word in such a way that shows to others the way that they should go, but that we may teach your word to others as well. We pray that as we study this afternoon, we'll be true to your word, that we'll be diligent in the studies, and we will look very carefully at them and, and live by them, Father. It is in Christ's most precious and holy name we pray. Amen. We are, of course, this morning, this afternoon, I keep wanting to say this morning, but this afternoon, we are on meekness. And you might notice, of course, that that leaves one more. We have one more next week, temperance. And these are certainly things we ought to have in our lives. They should be, as I've already said today and also have said before, these are things that should be seen in our lives. The fruit of the Spirit, if you stop and think, and I know that there is a, dis a debate on exactly how the Spirit indwells us, but if we stop and think, and we know that in fact, because Paul said so in both 1 Corinthians 3 and 1 Corinthians 6, that the Spirit does indwell us. Now, we can have a, a, an honest discussion on how the Spirit indwells us, whether it is through the Word only, or whether it is personal indwelling, and, and you can take whichever position you want to uh, on that, whichever one that you come to a knowledge on in the Word. Uh, but the truth is, the Bible simply says that the Spirit indwells us. So we know that the Spirit indwells us, and so if we are indwelled by the Spirit, again, whether it is a personal indwelling or, or a, an indwelling through the Word, these things ought to be produced in our lives. I want to be clear in what I just said, that I'm not suggesting that these things are produced miraculously. We're not suggesting that in the least bit. Because these are not things that are produced independently and miraculously uh, of, of our actions and, of course, of the Word. 
Because if they were, then if we are lacking, then it would not be our fault. It would be God's fault. It would be the Holy Spirit's fault for not producing these things in our lives. But yet we know that these things are things that ought to be in our lives. And, and when we stop and think about the things we've already looked at, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith, these are things that I hope as we have been studying them, you can look in your life, and I can look in mine, and we can see and say, yes, I see these things maybe to differing degrees, but that we can see these things in our life. And as I've already said, if, if we cannot, then we need to make a change. And if we do see them, but perhaps not at a very high level, then again, there's an area we can certainly work on. When we stop and think, because as we have gone through this, I've strived to look at the Greek. It is important to look at the Greek to understand uh, these words. It, it, it fascinates me. If you notice, I want you to catch something here. In, in verse 22 it says, but the fruit of the Spirit. And fruit there is singular. It is not fruits, as people often will say, but the fruit of the Spirit. And so we see this interwovenness of these things, how they tie in together. But that is emphasized when we in fact study the original Greek. For example, we see the word meekness today. Meekness comes from, and, and uh, I want to make sure I get this correct, Meekness comes from, and I'll probably mispronounce the Greek here, prautes, which is a noun, and means gentleness, humility, courtesy, consideration. Now, did you notice that it, it said gentleness? Now, wasn't that already mentioned? Gentleness is, in fact, another one of those words. Gentleness coming from a different word, krestastes, and meaning kindness or goodness. And there's goodness, by the way. Isn't that, in fact, another one of the fruit of the Spirit? A goodness, in the King James Version, comes from adathosine, meaning goodness. And so that one is pretty straightforward. So, so when you start looking at how the Greek, the Greek terminology, these words, in fact, are so closely related that some of the same wording is used to explain the Greek word. So we see very, very plainly that while there are some differences in these, that they are very closely tied in together. David Lipscomb in the Gospel Advocate would say of meekness, meekness is a quiet and forbearing spirit that suffers wrong without resentfulness but firmness and unyielding devotion to right. Brothers and sisters, I want you to think about what Brother Lipcomb said in this text, or in his, his uh, commentary here that he, he wrote. It, it is a quiet and forbearing spirit that suffers wrong without resentfulness. Now, we understand that if we stop and think about how he how he explained that, we understand the Bible points that out, does it not? That in fact, over and over, it teaches us to have just that kind of spirit, that kind of attitude about us, that we are willing to, to suffer wrong and to do so without a resentfulness. As I've said on a number of times, and I think I mentioned this morning, perhaps in Bible class, that... Sometimes that's, that's hard to do. We were talking, of course, uh, there in, in, in Bible class, we were looking at the Sermon on the Mount, and, and we, we talked about the turning of the other cheek, if you will. This attitude of, of being uh, patient and, and not, not allowing ourselves to, to be angry about these things and not to retaliate, if you will, against those who, who do us wrong. Peter, of course, teaches us very plainly that we ought to be willing to take those things if we are suffering for, for goodness, if we are suffering for doing what God would have us to do. Now, if we suffer for what we've done wrong, then, then there's no great thing in that, is there? 
it, it makes me think of the, the thief on the cross there. If you remi remember, Luke records that one of the thieves, in fact, spoke up and defended Jesus when the other one was railing on him. And he said, don't you get, and I'm paraphrasing here, don't you feel any shame? Don't you feel bad? We're, we're suffering this because we did something that we deserve to suffer. But he didn't do anything. Yet Jesus, like a sheep, as Isaiah describes it, like a sheep, was dumb. And, and we're not talking about dumb in the sense of being stupid. Or, or ignorant or, or anything, but dumb is in not speaking. Being dumb, he was led to the slaughter. Never complaining or speaking out, but but allowing himself to, to go through that 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 meek spirit about him. That is what we ought to have in us, and we are taught this not only here in Galatians five and verse twenty three, but in Matthew chapter eleven. And verse 29, we, we are further told that this is uh, the attitude, if you will, that we ought to have. Matthew 11 and verse 29. Matthew records here, Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest, unto your soul. Now, the word meek there, in fact, and I, I was trying to mark down on, on I, I just went ahead and copied it instead of trying to bring, bring the book in here. But this is from a, another form of the word that we already looked at, the word praates, which we notice is the word used in Galatians 5, 23, as well as Ephesians 4 and verse 2. But this word is praats, which is uh, meaning gentle, humble, uh, considerate, meek. Uh, just again, another form of the, of the same word. And, and Jesus is here teaching us that we ought to take upon ourselves this yoke, His yoke, and learn why. Because He is our example. Because He, in fact, is meek. And we, too, ought to be meek. And we're told in a number of texts, again, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 2, we, we often look at this in, in the sense of, of, in this context, being in unity. But notice, with all lowliness and meekness. Now we, we get the full context here. We begin in verse 1. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called with all lowliness and meekness with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And then, of course, he gives those seven ones, as we often refer to them. But, but we are to endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit of the bond of peace. We are to, in fact, walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we are called as he says there in verse 1. We are to live the Christian life. We are called. I know that there's this debate about people thinking that, well, when, when the, the Lord calls us to obey the gospel, or when the Lord calls us to go preach the word, brothers and sisters, friends, let's be clear that the Lord calls everybody. 1 Timothy 2 and verse 4, he desires that all men, all mankind be saved. He has called everyone. There are those who are waiting for some miraculous calling and, and they've already received a calling. It's in the Word. Pick up the Word and look and see that the Lord has called us to be saved. And, and according to that calling, we ought to live a certain way. And, and one of those ways is, of course, having a meek spirit about us. And that, of course, uh, goes into, uh, as, as again, as Brother Lipscomb describes it, and I just love the way he, he puts it here, a quiet and forbearing spirit that suffers wrong without resentfulness. Now, he, of course, made clear that that was not to compromise on what, doing what was right. We don't, we don't give in on doing what's right, but when we suffer for doing right, 
We do so without getting angry, without being resentful, without trying to get revenge, if you will, without doing all of these things. In Colossians uh, chapter 3 and verse 12, Colossians 3 and verse 12, we see here, put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowel, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. We are to put on meekness. We are to have that, that spirit about us. Peter, in, in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 4, 1 Peter 3 and verse 4, we see, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Verse 15, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you, what? With meekness and fear. These are things we ought to have in our lives. These are, this is something that ought to be evident, ought to be seen clearly. Now here's a question for you. And for me. How do we respond when we suffer for doing what is right? For doing what is good? Do we respond as God would have us to do? Do we respond again using Brother Lipscomb's words? Do we respond in, in, in being quiet and willing to suffer these things? Not being resentful. Not wanting to get back at, at someone. Are we living that life? Are we being that way? As I've already alluded to, we, we know that Jesus was a, a great example. And we do see a number of examples of this spirit, this meekness about individuals. We see Christ. We, again, as Isaiah described there in Isaiah 53, that He was led to the slaughter as a sheep, led to the slaughter. Oh. Again, not stupid or, or ignorant or, 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 or not having sense, but talking about not speaking. If you, if you read the King James Version, of course, you read about people who are the, the man who was deaf and dumb. And, and, and the way we use the word dumb today, it, it sounds like you're insulting the man. But in fact, the word being used that he was not able to speak. And there is what is being spoken of. Jesus could have been railing and saying, how could you do this to me? Now we know Jesus could have put a stop to it. We see that there in the garden when, when they came and he said, who do you look for? Who are you looking for? And, and they said, we're looking for Jesus. And he says, well, I'm Him. You, you found Him. You remember what happened to the people when He told them that? They went backwards and failed. I, I, I honestly believe that that was a demonstration that He had the ability that they weren't going to take Him anywhere if He didn't want them to. We see a number of times where they tried to get Him before it was His time, as the Bible describes it. Before His time. And what did He do? Disappeared, walked through the middle of the crowd, couldn't find him, just hid himself. He, until it was time for him to go, they weren't going to do anything to him. And when it was his time, he went only because he allowed them to. And he was willing to go quietly and, and suffer these things with a spirit of meekness, brothers and sisters. But this isn't the only example that we we see of, of this meekness. We think back to examples in the Old Testament of, of this meek spirit. Think about Daniel. You remember Daniel carried away into captivity? We looked at it the other day. We, we, I think maybe Wednesday or, or uh, that I mentioned Daniel. And we, we consider Daniel. Daniel carried away into captivity, made into a unit. He, 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 all this goes on, yet what does he do? He stands firm. 
He's not going to defile himself. And then he is, at, at this law, this stupid law is made that only for a month, and it's his enemies that, that kind of bring this about, only king can be petitioned. No gods, no one else, only the king. And Daniel, what does he do? He doesn't throw a fit. He goes up, opens his window as is his custom, bows down toward Jerusalem, and prays. He's not trying to hide it. He, you know, I, I've often said that they, they can't stop you from praying. We talk about stopping people from praying in the schools. You can't stop me from praying anywhere I want to. I can pray anywhere I want to, and you may not even know I'm doing it. I can pray quietly in my mind. I can just pray quietly, and, and you'll never know it. So you can't stop me from praying. But Daniel wasn't doing that. He was, he was letting it be known he was doing it. And then the king is told of this. And he passed this law. It can't be changed. He didn't want to do what he did. But he had to do it. Daniel didn't throw a fit and say, this is terrible. You're doing me wrong here. Daniel assures the king it'd be okay. Daniel was thrown into that lion's den and we know what happened. The lion's mouths were shut. The lions didn't touch Daniel. They didn't, they didn't attack Daniel. They didn't eat Daniel. They didn't kill Daniel, you know. He was willing to go through. They're in the book of Daniel. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, they weren't going to back down from doing what was supposed to be done, and they told the king, we're not going to hide the fact we're going to do what we're supposed to do. And what did they do? They were still thrown into that fiery pit. The king had his eyes open there, didn't he? Because it didn't work. They, they, they were willing to suffer these things. Job, for example. You study the book of Job. There is meekness. Now he did, I must say, when we consider Job, Job did get a little bit where he wanted to question God, so he, he kind of got a little, little speaking a little bit strongly toward God. But yet he remained in God's sight. He would not back down. Uh, you know, he remained faithful in God's sight. He would not back down from, from serving God. The devil challenged and said, He cursed you to your face. Over and over, a couple of times he, he said this. None of it worked, did it? His friends came and said it was his fault that, that all this was happening. His children died. They must have done something wrong. All this was, was at least logical. It was their fault. Job remained. Job suffered these things we see in them this example. We see in them the example of, of a meek spirit. Now what about you and me? We've asked that. What do people see in us? Now one might say, well, we're not being dragged off and thrown into a fiery pit. We haven't been thrown into some lion's den because we are are, are praying to the Lord. We, we don't have to worry about those things. You know, we're, we're not being drug away and, and nailed to some cross and crucified. We're not going through all those things. But, brothers and sisters, notice, notice how people respond to you if you don't act like them. If you behave differently. Notice, pick up your Bible sometime and, and start reading your Bible around people who are not Christians and see how they respond. See how they mock you. See how they, they, they challenge you. Pray sometime. You know, sometimes that, that's one of the things, and I must admit, I, I guess I've been guilty of this as much as anybody else. Sometimes we're a little embarrassed to do that, aren't we? 
We go out to some public place and, and we, we get there and we have a prayer and we what do we do? We get as quiet as we can, don't we? We don't want anybody else to know when we're praying. I go to preachers' luncheons, different ones, at different times. And, and let me tell you, it, it, it is amazing to get around preachers. And, and you, you say, well, okay, this preacher's called upon to lead the prayer. And some preachers are kind of like that. They, they'll, they'll be kind of reserved and a little quiet about it. And some, they ain't hiding their, their praying. I'm sure everybody around knows they're praying. There's nothing wrong with that, is there? But yet, in relation to what we're talking about, being meek, how many people mock that? How many people ridicule others for doing that? How many, how many times are you being, are you suffering? And we see people who are suffering for their faith, brothers and sisters. Now, maybe you, maybe I have not really had that opportunity, if you will, to suffer. But how would we respond? What would we do? Would we respond with a meek spirit? Would we, again, using the words of Glitzman, do so with quiet and forbearing spirit that suffers wrong without resentfulness, but firmness and unyielding devotion to right. These are things that are to be in our lives. And if they're not, we need to make sure we're working on that. And I trust each one of us. As we've gone through these, we've got one more next week. As we've gone through these, I trust that each one of us can say, we have areas here we can work on as individuals. Maybe it's different for you than it is for me. Maybe, maybe you look at the days and you say, I've got that. No problem. But you know, last week's, or maybe next week's, or maybe one or two or three weeks ago, I, I need to work on that. Or maybe you say, well, you know, he got one today. I need to, I need to look at that one. I need to work on that one. Whatever the case may be, let us see these, this fruit of the Spirit in our lives and make certain that we are, are working daily to produce these things as we go through life. If you're here today, if you're not a Christian, then I would encourage you to put on Christ in baptism. I would encourage you to, to obey the Gospel. Now maybe you, you need to take a step or two before you get to baptism. Maybe you need to, and we know you, you hear the Word. We know we must hear the Word. Because that's where faith comes from, and we must have faith. Maybe you need to work on having faith. Or maybe you have faith. Maybe you need to uh, repent of your sins. Maybe you need to confess Christ to be the Son of God. Maybe you're willing and have done all of these. Maybe you just need to Take that final step and obey the gospel in being baptized. All things are ready. And we'd be glad to help you to obey the gospel. Or maybe you're here and you're a Christian. Maybe you, you've stumbled. Maybe you haven't been what you need to be. Maybe you look at today's lesson and you need to work on that. You need to, need to seek God's forgiveness somewhere in something that was said today. Or maybe something unrelated to today's lesson or lessons. Maybe some sin is separating you from God. If that's the case, as Christians, we know that we can go to God and seek His forgiveness. He's promised that He'll forgive us if we'll do so. If you're here and you have need, we encourage you, we please, to come while we stand, while we sing. Down at the cross where my sin